Hello guitar enthusiast Lauren Bateman here and we're going to do one of my favorites. We're going to do Melissa Etheridge's Come to My Window which is more of an intermediate guitar song. So I'm going to show you how to play through the strumming patterns for the verse, for the chorus, and some other cool little picking things you can do if you choose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you very briefly what this should sound like and then we're going to get into the tutorial for the different parts of the song. So check it out. Alright, so if you can hear from that brief demonstration, we're going to be doing a lot of strumming in this song. And it's pretty cool because um, there's a few different things we can do. And it definitely changes between the verse and the chorus. So let's talk about this intro, which is probably the easiest part of the song. If you need the chord chart for the song, you can always go to my website. I'll make sure to put a link in the description so that you guys can go and grab that. So this intro, which is also a first chorus, we have a strumming pattern of it's going to be G and C splitting a measure followed by A minor 7 and D splitting a measure. And this is probably the easiest part of the song because all we're going to do is a single strum. So we're going to do G, C, A minor 7, D. And then we just repeat that. Crawl inside, wait by the light of the moon. And then you do it again, come to my window. And that gets us into kind of the interlude and the verse. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go over to the interlude which requires a little bit more of an intricate strumming and picking style. Now Melissa's version is always going to sound a little bit better and a little bit fuller because she uses a 12 string guitar which is one of the few guitars I don't actually own. I'll have to put it on my list to get a 12 string guitar. So you're going to hear a lot more strings and a lot more sound coming from her and that's the reason why. She's got six more strings than I do or probably than most of you do. So keep that in mind. Now there's a couple ways we can do these verses. We can try and mimic a little bit of what Melissa is doing or we could just go straight into the strumming. When I play live, I usually just go straight into the strumming, but I want to give you guys some options. So first let's talk about the chord progression for this verse. So the verse is, it's three chords over and over again. It's C and G splitting a measure followed by a full measure of a D chord. So C and G splitting a measure followed by a D chord. But the strumming pattern that we're going to use um, is a little bit syncopated on this song. So let's talk about that. So you've probably seen some of my videos where we talk about hopping the rhythms and that's because the chords change not on a down strum but rather on an up strum. So that's going to happen in this song. So our strumming pattern for the C chord is going to be down, down, down. So that's one, two, and down, down, down. And we're going to do an up strum on the 16th note, the uh, after two. And that's going to be the change for our G chord. So it's going to be one, two, and a down, 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 up. One more time. Down, 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 up. So it's one, two, and a. Let's talk about the rest of the pattern that we're going to do for the G, which is also tricky for a lot of people because there's going to be, we're basically doing four up strums in a row. So for the C chord, it's going to be down, 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 and then we're going to switch to G and it's going to be up, 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 down, up. So the G is going to be up, 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 down, up. So C is down, 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 up, 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 down, up. And then you would just play the whole thing on D. Down, 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 up, 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 down, up. Again, C. Down, 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 up, 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 down, up, down, 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 up, 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 down, up. So that's the strumming pattern that we're going to use for the verse. And Melissa does a really interesting thing. What she does is she kind of starts with some picking and then she really, really gets into the strumming. So let's talk a little bit about that. Now, again, like I said, Melissa's is always going to sound a little bit more fuller because she's got a lot more strings to work with. And the on a 12 string, the octave is a little bit higher. So you're going to hear probably a lot more high pitched notes in her version versus our version. But all we're going to be doing is we're going to just be randomly picking notes. We're not going to be strumming the whole chord, but we always want to start with like the bass note of the chord. So the pattern I'm using is it's going to be down, down, up, up, down, up. I promise I'm not hitting any particular things. I'm getting the bass notes, which would be the fifth string for the C chord, the sixth string for the G chord, and the fourth string for the D chord. 
and outside of that I'm hitting the bass note and then I'm trying to ignore the bass note and just stick with the bright more treble side of the note so we have down to up up down up down to up up down up down to up up down up down and then you can do that again down to up up down up down to up up down up down and then I would go into the strumming and that's kind of a cool way that you can transition and, and build some dynamics into that verse. So now let's talk about the pre-chorus before we get into the actual chorus. So the next part we're gonna talk about is the interlude. It's really only four measures and the strumming pattern for the first half is gonna remain the same. We're just gonna do something a little different on the end. So let's talk about the progression. The progression is E minor and C splitting a chord followed by a D chord. And then you repeat that again, E minor and C splitting a measure followed by the D chord. The strumming pattern we're gonna keep the same. The E minor can take over the first half, down, 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 and then the C can take over the second half, up, 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 down, up. So nothing has changed there, and then D, you would do the full strumming pattern. Now, the next time through, again, we're gonna do the same strumming pattern for the E minor and C. And then the D, we're gonna do a build. So all eighth note down strums. So we're gonna build into this chorus. So it's gonna sound like this. Here comes the build. And that's gonna get us into the chorus, which is the next part we're gonna go over. So the chorus uses the same chords as the verse, just in a slightly different pattern. So it's going to be C, uh, the G chord first and then the C chord. They're still splitting a measure, but it's G, C, and then D. And that's your entire chorus for the chord progression. Thanks for keeping it simple, Melissa. The strumming pattern, on the other hand, is not so simple. So let's talk about the first half. The C and G are, are relatively easy. So we're just going to do down, 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 up, down, 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 up. So all we're going to do for the C and G chord. Down, 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 up, down, down, down. One more time, down, 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 up, down, 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 up. Very simple. The D chord is the one that gets all the embellishments and all the fun stuff. So let's talk about the D chord. So looking at my strumming pattern here, I have one, two, and a. That's how it starts. That's simple enough, right? So one, two, and a. But then we have a couple ups after that. So we have the E on the three and the up. So it's one, two E and uh, E up. So it's down, down, up, down, up, up, up. So three ups in a row on this one. So it's one, two E and uh, up, up. And then at the very end, we're just gonna put four E and a uh, down, up, down, up. At the very end. So the D is down, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up. Sorry, I had to look at the strumming pattern. So it's down, down, up, down, up, 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 down, up, down, up. That is our strumming pattern for the chorus, and that's what we're gonna do. Now, I should let you know that when I play this song, I sometimes don't stick to just this strumming pattern, and I'm sure Melissa does the same thing. A lot of times our hands just kind of take over whatever we're doing. So we wanna make sure, you know, we're, we're improvising, we're being fluid. We're not really thinking about the strumming pattern, especially if we're singing the song. So the next section we're gonna talk about is our bridge section. And we have a bit of a chord ch progression change here as well as some timing changes. So let's talk about the bridge. So first let's talk about the strumming pattern that we're gonna use for this bridge. Yes, another strumming pattern. So this is another kind of intricate 16th note strumming pattern. Let's start off with our E minor chord since that is the first chord of our bridge. So our strumming pattern is gonna be one, a two, E, and. So it's down, up, down, up, down. That's the strumming pattern. As I look at my laptop over here, if you're wondering why I'm looking that way. So we have one, a two, E, and. All right, down, up, down, up, down. And then the next part, we're gonna do another up, down, up, down, but it starts on the E of three. So it's E and a four, up, down, up, down. So it's gonna be one, a two, E and, E and a four. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. 
That's the strumming pattern. There's one more section at the end. We're going to add an and a, a down up to the very end. So it's going to be down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up. Again, the whole thing, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up. And then we're going to start the first half of that. Actually, three quarters of it is going to be given to an E minor chord. And the last down, down, up is going to be given to a D chord. We're splitting up these measures in an awkward timing now for this bridge. So the first part is going to be down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And we're going to switch to D on the down. Down, down, up. So it's going to be down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up. And then the next chord we go to is C. And then we repeat that. It's going to sound like this with the hops or with the tr transition in timing. It's going to be. So you really hear I'm just on those that D chord and that G chord for one beat. And then we jump over to A minor, which is fine because we stay on A minor for two measures. And then we jump over to D for two measures. So what we're going to do is I'm going to play through the bridge very briefly. And at the end, we're going to jump into the picking version of the chorus that we did earlier. We did it on the verse, but this time we're going to do it on the chorus for the C, G, and D chords. So here's what it should sound like. I don't care what they think. I don't care. to come to my window, but we're going to keep picking. Come, come to my window, I'll be home, I'll be home, all done. I'm coming home, and then right back into the chorus. In the actual song, she doesn't do that pause. She, um, she keeps playing through. When I perform this song live, I like to put that pause in there just for dramatic effect, because you've got this, you know, Come to my window, I'll be home, I'll be home. So it does, it adds like a really cool um, dynamic effect and people aren't expecting that break to be there so it really gets their attention. After that point, we're back to the chorus and that is Melissa Etheridge's Come to My Window. Really awesome song, as you can see, lots of cool picking patterns. So like this video, give me a cool comment, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next lesson video.